Well, hey, thanks for having me here today. My name is uh, Brian Kelly, and uh, I work with the Cultivate Church Planting Program with CGN, Calvary Global Network. And uh, I'm so excited to be here and hanging out with my good buddy, Daniel Williams. And uh, just appreciate you, Daniel, for letting me be on your show and, um, and talk to your, uh, your guests today. Well, um, today I want to talk about a topic that has been a... Um, a source of blessing for myself and a question that I often get. I'm a pastor, a church planter, and missionary myself. Um, and a lot of times I get that question of, you know, how do you make good decisions uh, within uh, ministry, within in life, uh, from a biblical perspective? You know, when it's not clear cut of what you should do, when there's a decision between two different good options, I mean, how do you choose? In other words, it's the age-old question of, how do I discern the will of God? You know, what's God's will for my life? I always love it when people ask me that as a pastor, because I'm like, I don't know what God's will for your life is. You figure it out yourself with the Lord, you know? It's like, He's got to speak to you. So that's my answer. In the message. Talk to the Lord. He'll tell you. <laughs> but no, seriously, we've got some uh, principles that I've found helpful in leadership, um, being a leader of a church and uh, involved in leadership um, and cultivate church planting. Um, and... Believe it or not, kind of the advice that I want to look at uh, from a biblical perspective and actually from a couple of scriptures I want to uh, pull from today, this piece of leadership advice on making decision, decisions is from a couple of scriptures that it might be uh, uh, kind of funny when you hear these scriptures. And the first one is Proverbs chapter 16, verse 33. And it says in the New Living Translation, we may throw the dice, but the Lord determines how they fall. And uh, if I could give you some advice, it would be the advice of throwing the dice. Just roll the dice. Now, some of you are thinking, hey, this doesn't sound like a very biblical thing. This sounds like a pretty careless or reckless thing. But what I mean by that is this, that sometimes we just need to make a decision. We don't know what it is. We don't know which one we're supposed to make. But we make that decision all the while looking to the Lord, trusting in the Lord that He's going to give us the right direction. Because I truly believe with all my heart, if you're a leader, if you're a person who wants to do the will of God, that's your heart's desire. When you start to make those decisions, you are actually going to see that God will direct your paths. Man's, man plans his ways, but the Lord directs his steps. And we have to plan. Sometimes we have to roll the dice between multiple good options. Now, I've been a, a missionary, a church planter, pastor for about 20 years. And when we were first um, going onto the mission field, my wife and I were deciding where should we go on the mission field. We knew God wanted us to be missionaries. He, we knew He wanted us to be involved in church planting, but where should we go? We had the option to go to Cambodia. We had a, a ministry. It seemed like an open door. They said, will you come to Cambodia and uh, help us with this orphanage, plant a church, be part of this program in Cambodia? So we thought, hey, we've never been there before. Maybe this is the place that God is calling us to go. At the same time, my wife had heard a message uh, at Bible college um, previously about Africa, East Africa, the country of Uganda and Sudanese refugees. She said, I really want to go to Africa, to go to Uganda. That's probably the place that we should go. All the while, we're thinking maybe we should go someplace closer like uh, Mexico. It's easier to get to. You know, a lot of people we know are doing missions down there. Maybe we should do that. I had a buddy that was church planting in Mexico and going to plant a church down there named Mike Vincent. So we're, we're looking at all these options, wondering what is the will of God? We didn't have any clear direction or explanation. So we just really prayed about it. God, show us where to go. And I'm going to tell you at the end of the day, this was what worked for us. This is my leadership uh, advice is, don't get stuck in a holding pattern. Make a decision. Now, there's a time for waiting on God, but there's also a time for making a decision. And I, I believe this, that so many Christians and leaders in general get stuck in a place because they don't know the exact right thing to do, that they fail to make that decision going forward. And someone said this to me one time, a long time ago. I never forgot it. They said, when you're making a decision for the Lord, just remember, God can't steer a parked car. So you need to be moving. You need to be going. And then God, God's going to direct you. Here's another passage that I want to um, read to you about this very thing, about rolling the dice in particular. And that's in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 24. I believe every leadership advice, you know, I'm, 
we're Christians here. We believe that God's word is the authority. You got to know that the best leadership advice for you is coming from God's word. So I want to just read um, a couple of verses here. It was actually after Judas had uh, uh, abandoned or actually uh, uh, forsaken the Lord and, you know, that whole story. And they, they had these apostles that they said, we need to replace him. And they had in their day multiple decisions. What's the best decision? We've got guys here who can, uh, who've been with Jesus. We've got guys here who, who've taught the word. We've got guys here who saw the resurrection. But there were multiple of them. They only needed just one, just one decision. That's the way it happens with us too. We often come down to multiple options, one decision. Which the one should we make? And this is in the Bible. It says they prayed, okay, and they said, Lord, you know the hearts of all. Show us which one of these two you have chosen. They narrowed it down to two, thankfully, made it easy. And uh, to take the place in this ministry and the apostleship for which Judas had turned aside to go to his own place. And uh, they cast lots for them. What does that mean? It means they literally roll the dice. <laughs> well, it's like flip a coin. Hey, heads, heads you're in, tails you're in. And what do you call? It's like before they got in the NFL, they flipped the coin. Who's going to go first? Who's going to be the apostle? Bing! And they threw it up. They rolled the dice. And they cast Lot, the Bible says. And the Lot fell on Matthias, and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. Congratulations. The choice is Matthias. But how do we make choices? Now, I don't really, uh, it's my opinion that I don't really recommend rolling the dice for stuff. So, <laughs> you know, it's not like when we were going on the mission field, we just flipped the coin. I mean, I've heard of people that have done that. They take one of those globes and they get it on the desk and then they spin it. Maybe you've heard of this, missionaries doing this. And then they go, bing, they put their finger on the globe wherever it stops. And, you know, it may stop in somewhere like uh, uh, Greenland. I thought of Iceland, but... Iceland's the green one and Greenland's the icy one. So they get, hit the icy one, they're like, oh, Lord, that's not your will. Spin it again, bing. People do that with the Bible, too. They, uh, they open it up, whatever page it falls to, this is for me, Lord. Now, so I don't, I'm not recommending, and it's in my opinion that you shouldn't uh, take everything by chance, like just rolling the dice and seeing what happens. But that principle, leadership principle of making a decision, even if you don't know for sure, which one you should do. Just take a chance on it. And that's what I think they're doing here. That's what it says in Proverbs 16, We may throw the dice, but the Lord determines how they fall. But here's a couple of principles that I take from this passage back in the uh, uh, book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 24, that we read. And number one, if you're going to make these decisions, if you're going to um, kind of take a chance on one or the other or roll the dice in that sense, um, number one, you need to make sure that you're submitting to the Lord. It says in verse 24, they prayed and they said, you are the Lord. What does that mean to be Lord? Well, what it means to be Lord is that God is the one that gets to tell us what to do. Imagine that. <laughs> I mean, we as Christians, you know, we, we think we have it all under control. I'm going to tell you something right now. God is sovereign. He has everything under control. He is the Lord. Whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, whether you're even a Christian or not, God is sovereign over the affairs of men. So you need to recognize that first and foremost. And why is that important? Because you need to be willing to submit to God's will if he does direct you to one way or another, to one person or another. In this case, it was Matthias. They said, this is the Lord's will. It reminds me of the Apostle Paul who would often make decisions based on the Holy Spirit, but also based on what he thought was a good idea. He wanted to go up into Asia at one point, and he, was, he made that decision, he, was, he rolled the dice, he took the, the challenge, he went in that direction, but God, the Bible says God actually forbade him and redirected him. Remember, God can't steer a parked car. You're making decisions, you're making decisions according to the will of the Lord, he's your Lord, but God will redirect you. But that first principle is so important that he is the Lord. And uh, the Bible says that even to be a, a Christian, that you must confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you will be saved. So I'm saying when you're making decisions, leadership principle, let's call this principle number one about making those decisions. Principle number one, he is the Lord. Submit to his sovereignty. You know, I talk to a lot of people that they want to know the will of God. What's the will of God for my life? 
What's the, this decision that I should make? Should I marry this person? Should I take that job? Should I go to this, move to this place? And I always ask them, first and foremost, who's really the Lord in your life? Because a lot of people want to know, they're, they're asking a different question than what they really want to ask. What they really want to ask is, what decision is going to make me happy? What decision is going to benefit my life? What decision is going to be good for me personally? That's, that's the question they should be asking because when you probe a little bit, you discover Jesus is not the Lord. He's not the, the shot caller in their life. What I mean by this is this. Let's say, for example, that I, I want to be a missionary and I say, Jesus, your Lord, direct me. Should I go to Cambodia? Should I go to Uganda? Should I go to Mexico or somewhere else? Uh, Greenland, where there's ice. Where, where should I go, Lord? Those, and then you pray to the Lord and you say, but you're, you're sovereign. You're in control of my life. And then God comes back to me and says, actually, he didn't do this, thankfully. But he says, actually, I don't want you to be a missionary. I want you to stay right where you are. I want you just to stay in your hometown, where you live, where you've been, and be faithful to what I've called you there. And I don't want you to do some grand adventure or travel all over the place. I just want you to... And if, if he's the Lord, this is what I'm getting, the point I'm getting to. If you want to know the will of God, make sure that he's your Lord because God's not going to tell you to do something if he knows you're not going to do it. Why would God reveal his will to you if you're not willing to do the will that he's revealed? I hope that makes sense because there's a lot of people that say, I want God's will, but when he tells them, they're like, can I get a second will, <laughs> a second opinion? It's like, uh, you know, you go to a nutritionist or a, a health coach and they say, yeah, and you want the results. You want to be in shape and everything. And uh, they said, yeah, you've got to stop uh, drinking so many sodas and eating at McDonald's four times a day, three times a day, whatever you do. And uh, you say, okay, let me get a second opinion. You go to another one. So basically the, the question is, is he the Lord of your life? Are you willing to give it up uh, for him? Uh, number two, let's get another principle here about making decisions, rolling the dice. Um, and that is, again, back from our, our biblical passage about them making this decision. It's a great example lesson. And they prayed. They said, you, O Lord, you know the hearts of all. Um, show which one of these two you have chosen. So the thing I want to point out about this, this is that, and this is the second principle uh, about making decisions, that leadership lesson, making decisions, uh, principle number one, he's the Lord, submit to his authority. Make sure he's the Lord of your life, you'll make the right decisions. And even if you don't, he'll redirect. But number two, you have to have help. You need people around you that are going to speak into your life. This decision in Acts chapter one was not made by a single individual. It was made by a group of people. It was made with wisdom and counsel. They investigated, have these men been with Jesus? Have these men the qualifications and so forth. So the point that I'm making here is we need help. We need people around us that are going to help us make the right decision. And I, I love this about my wife. I love this about my close friends is that I know if, uh, <laughs> if I make a bad decision or I'm thinking about a bad decision, I'm going to hear about it, especially my beloved wife. I love her so dearly. And she'll let me know like, hey, that doesn't sound like a very good idea to me. And if I'm wise, I'm going to listen to that counsel. In the multitude of counselors, there's wisdom. And so we, they had help, people around you who will help with your decision. It says there in that passage that they prayed, not just he prayed or one person prayed. And they chose between multiple people, these two. And it even mentions a, a kind of a, a, a negative influence, which was Judas. And we can, we can even take this as well, that when you're gathering people around you to help with these decisions, make sure you're getting people who are positive, who love you, who are genuine. Even the closest friends may turn out to be traitors. And some of you, if you're into leadership, you're listening to these leadership lessons, you're watching these leadership lessons, you've probably had those experiences where a Judas shows up and causes problems in the decision making where they're, they're really um, intent on one dis particular decision. I remember the story of Judas where he wanted to not spend the money or waste the money that the girl was pouring the expensive perfume. It was wasting, he said. He had that 
negative input. The Bible says he did that because he loved money. He wanted to keep the money bag and dip in. So be careful who you gather around yourself. Only trusted people. And, but make sure you do that. You need help. Don't be a lone decider. So I guess you could call that principle number two in making decisions. Number one, he's the Lord. Submit to his authority. Number two, you need help. Don't be a lone decider. Get other people's input. Let's go to number three. Number three, God, and this is something that you just need to know in making decisions, especially for the Lord and as a Christian person. You need to understand not only is God sovereign, we call him Lord, not only do we have people surrounding us that are going to help us with those decisions while leaving out those negative inputs, but you need to know this, that God is not only omnipotent, meaning all-powerful, but he is omniscient, meaning all-knowing. God knows the right decision to make. God knows the path that you're going to go on, that you need to go on. And it, again, it always comes back to the Lord. Even in Acts chapter 1, verse 24 there, it says, You, O Lord, you know the hearts of all. Imagine if you could have some inside information to a, uh, let's say, a sports game or a bet that you're doing or something like that. I don't encourage betting, although this whole thing is about rolling the dice. <laughs> Remember, the house always wins. But imagine if you could have that inside information, some uh, person on the inside that could tell you or reveal to you what was going to happen or what was happening in a scenario, in a decision that you're going to make. It would greatly change the decision that you're making. You know, if someone, uh, you're going to go be part of another community or another job and then you had someone inside on that job and they were able to give you the information and say, hey, you probably don't want to choose here because A, B, C, and D. All these people are saying this, the company's going this way, it's not for you. Imagine if you had that inside man. And uh, I'm here to tell you today, if you're a Christian, you have an inside man. His name is Jesus Christ. God is omniscient. That means he knows everything. He knows the pros and cons better than you could ever know. And guess what? He's not, he's not a secret keeper from you. He reveals things to us by the Holy Spirit. Do you have the Holy Spirit in your life? God can reveal inside information, uh, secret knowledge about the decision you're going to make by His Holy Spirit. We, he knows the details of your decision. Look to His omniscience and His wisdom to be poured out into your life. The Bible says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all men liberally and without reproach. God will do that for you. In fact, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 8, it says, your father knows what you have need of before you ask him. He knows the right decision. He knows the right direction. He knows the right spouse. He knows the right company. He knows the right uh, location to move to. The right one's Florida, by the way. That's the right answer. <laughs> we just moved to Florida. We've moved around a lot. Listen, Florida's nice. There's no mountains here, but whatever. You know, it's, they've got beaches instead. So he, but he knows the right one for you. That may not be right for you. It might be Greenland, which is icy. And number four, principle number four. This is important. And, and I've already alluded to this previously. And that is, God will show you the right direction if you ask him. So this kind of takes the, um, this is what I started with, jokingly, but not jokingly. It kind of takes the stress out of it that you need to know and believe that if you ask the Lord for His will, truly, if He's your Lord, you're getting people in your life to help you make this decision. You're resting on His omniscience. That he has, he's your inside man. You need to believe, if all those things are true, that He is going to reveal the right path for you to take. He did that for us. Let me tell you a little story. I'll go on to our final principle of making this leadership uh, lesson of making those decisions right decisions. When we were deciding whether to go on the mission field, or not whether, but where to go on the mission field, I mentioned that before. You know, God kind of made it easy for us. Here's how. We were planning to go to Cambodia. We were going to help. We had decided to join this mission. And uh, it was about, the year was uh, the year 2001. And we were moving uh, across the country. My wife was already 
in Washington State. That's where we were moving to before we moved out on the mission field. And I was in California with my friends. We were gathering ministry partners. We were spreading the word. We're going to be, you know, launching out on the mission field, gathering support, that kind of thing. Now, it was uh, September. The, I remember the date because it was September 10th, 2001. And that next morning we woke up on September 11th. The World Trade Towers fell. And uh, we were, everything, all plans changed. So what, happens, what happened is this. I haven't shared this with many people, but there was a pastor that I knew who I had known but I had not seen for over a year. And this pastor, unbeknownst to me, was planning a trip on September 10th to, to go to the country of Uganda, one of the countries we were praying for, about going to. Now, we had already decided Cambodia. We rolled the dice. We took a chance. And he, he was going with a team, unbeknownst to us. That team was grounded of all flights, because all flights were grounded at that time, September 11th. And they, had, they were coming from Montana. They were going through L.A. and then traveling to Entebbe, Uganda. But they got grounded in L.A. So they were getting lunch at a fast food restaurant. In, uh, it was actually in Orange County at the time. And I was with some of my ministry friends. Like I said, I was there. And we went to lunch. I'm not even kidding. This is, this is how the Lord works. We went to lunch at the exact same restaurant. I think it was a Dairy Queen or In-N-Out. I don't even know if they had In-N-Out back then. I guess they did. But it was at, I think it was Dairy Queen. And we met this pastor and this team randomly. I mean, randomly. Is there any random chance with God? Nope. And we met this group, and he's like, hey, Brian. I'm like, what are you guys doing here? And they said, you know, we're gonna, we were going to Uganda. Flights got grounded. Let me make a long story short. I ended up going with that pastor and some other ministry partners from uh, Southern California to New York City. We drove night and day in a van. We took turns driving and we ministered to the people in New York after 9-11. On that trip, this pastor says to me, you'll never believe it. We're going to Uganda. We're going to plant a church. We're going to start an outreach. We're going to start a ministry to homeless kids. He said, would you pray about going with us? I said to them, you know what? I don't even need to pray about it. This is beyond coincidence. We're in. And that's how the decision changed. We ended up living and ministering in Kampala, Uganda, for 10 years. And that's where I, uh, I became a pastor and we pastored the church there. That individual ended up moving back to the States after the first year. We stayed there and continued on the ministry. Extremely fruitful. It was my wife's dream come true because she wanted to go to Uganda, but also the Lord showed us because we asked him. We wanted his will and he directed us. What a bizarre way to direct us though with all these different pieces falling into place. Only God could plan something like that. That's why I'm saying, come on, let's get started. Let's start driving. God can't steer a parked car. Let's take a chance. Let's roll the dice. We were driving here the other day. We were on the freeways on the west. We're from the west side of Florida where it's nice and peaceful. The Gulf is there. And it's beautiful. And now I'm over here visiting my good friend, Daniel Williams, on the east coast. It's it's like, uh, you know, crazy. There's like parties going on everywhere, waves and stuff, surf surfers and big, bigger cities. So they got freeways here. We just have a couple of two-lane, you know, roads over there. And uh, yesterday uh, we were driving and, and they have these freeways here where um, they have these uh, express lanes, but you have to get in to the express lane like, uh, and then they go on for like four or five miles. So you could miss your exit. You, It's like, you're, once you're in, you're in. So we were coming up and the traffic was there. There was the express lane, but we had to get off in a couple of miles. So I said to Lynn, that's my wife. Should we go in the express lane or not? So decision making in the will of God. She got out my notes. She looked through my notes. <laughs> no, she didn't. She just said one thing to me. She said, Brian, you know we take chances. Go over there in the express lane. Let's do this. And that's the kind of attitude I think more Christians need to have. You got a decision to make, you're all freaked, you're paralyzed by not making some decision. Listen, get going. And I know there's a time to wait on the Lord and all that. You know, you're going to have to have a relationship with God. But by and large, my experience is that so many Christians are paralyzed with fear, messing around with the things of the world. Just start making those decisions and go with it. 
It says they cast their lot, and the lot fell, and it, and it became uh, a great ministry within, uh, within the early church. Leadership lesson. One thing that's passionate on my heart is making those decisions, but not being paralyzed with fear. We need to, to, to let God direct us as He does, as only He can do. Make sure, number one, that He is the Lord. You're submitting to His sovereignty. Number two, you have help. You have people that are speaking positively, that are helping you make these decisions. Number three, you've got an inside man with God. His omniscience is there. You can trust Him in this. Number four, He will show you if you ask Him. Ask God. It's as simple as that. Seek Him. Ask Him. Knock on the door. It will be open. He's not trying to hide uh, His will from you. He'll let you know if you ask Him. And then finally, you need to make that decision. Make that decision. Just roll the dice. See where, see where the dice fall. Uh, and flip that coin. What's the decision going to be? But start going for God. Start living for God more fully than you are. And those decisions, uh, hopefully those principles, can help you make those decisions um, a little bit uh, better. Leadership lessons. God bless you.